Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex from Health Potion Studios. Everyone should be familiar with checkboxes. You see them all the time to confirm that you are not a robot, you don't want to subscribe to a mailing list, and yeah, obviously I read the terms and conditions. By itself, it isn't too special, but if you put 9 of them together, you can start to make a face, and if you put 25 of them together, you can start to make letters or small images. When you put 4,000 checkboxes together, you get Doom. Well, technically, you get a screen and still have to do a lot of extra work to make Doom, but I'll get into that in a bit. This checkbox system was nearly a year-long process and went through many iterations before Doom was even started. My first project was a digital clock made out of checkboxes. Nothing really too fancy going on here. It was just more of a test to see if I could manipulate the checkboxes correctly. Now it starts to get more interesting. We have a checkbox screen to manipulate. It is 80 pixels wide and 50 pixels high. For reference, the NES is 256 pixels by 240 pixels. A TI-84 is 96 pixels by 64 pixels. Believe it or not, this is still larger than your teacher's lectures. This page was simply a test of having multiple objects moving around on a checkbox grid. Nobody wants to play a game of just rectangles, so this test used the same bouncing balls as before, but this time each ball is reading some sprite data. The ability to load images into the checkbox system would be essential for a game, unless your game is Thomas Was Alone. Next I worked on some UI. I converted 67 unique letters and characters into a suitable checkbox format. They were displayed using a similar technique as the previous sprites. Moving on, here we have the first actual game created with the checkbox system. Snake was a perfect fit for the system seeing as it already follows a grid. This game gave me some trouble because originally I thought I could simply check if a checkbox was enabled and kill the snake that way. However, the game loop goes like this. First, clear all checkboxes on screen. Next, update the snake movement. And finally, reactivate all active checkboxes. This meant that by the time the snake would look for a collision, the checkboxes were all turned off and only enabled after it was updated. I fixed it by keeping track of the body segments in a list, which is probably what I should have done in the first place anyways. My record is 15 because it eventually gets too fast to play. Let me know what your high score is in the comments below. Next, I created a subscribe button reminding you to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I'd really appreciate it. At this point, it was time for some optimizations. This segment is a little long so please bear with me. Using some Chrome developer features, you can have the page updates highlighted in green. What this is showing is that every frame, every enabled checkbox is refreshed. While this is fine for Snake, more complicated games would experience some performance issues. If a checkbox is currently enabled, there's no need to re-enable the checkbox in the next frame. So the new system now works like this. The first frame is drawn to the screen, all current checkboxes are stored into a last frame list. Every new checkbox looks for its existence in the last frame list. If it's in the list, it means it's still on from before. I know, I know, I'm losing you. Hold on. Looking at this test page, you can see that each snake object is only refreshing at the head and the tail with no updates in the middle. Look at how fast the system can run. Okay, so this page was just for fun. I wanted to see if I could make 3D shapes. Turns out, I can. Also turns out, matrices are no fun to work with. By this point, you've probably noticed the checkbox system is limited in colors. You've got white, and you've got blue. I started thinking about more color options. There's a method known as dithering, which will flicker pixels to blur colors together. So I implemented dithering, and let me just say, ow. It works, but it's kind of painful. It also only works if the page runs at 60 frames per second and you don't blink or the page lags. Oh well, two colors it is I guess. Next, I made an analog clock since I already had a digital clock. It worked. Whatever. Roughly everything up to this point was testing before a real game. It was finally time to start making a real game using my system. Sorry Snake. I started the prep work on a platformer. I implemented a gravity system and different sprites depending on the player's movement. And here is my final platformer. I 
I gave up on the platformer, so I did this instead. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go. Don't click off the video just yet. Next up is the actual Doom game. Now, Doom was quite difficult. First, I needed to create a rate cast system to draw the levels. Rate casting involves shooting out points all along the player's vision. When a point hits a wall, its distance is saved and you can build the walls based on the distances. I tried building my own system, but eventually found code from someone else that I modified heavily to fit my needs. After way too many issues, I managed to get a level into my checkbox system. Next up, enemies. Hey, get that weak 2D crap out of here. There, now that's better. It's everybody's favorite enemy, random character I found online. This demo also includes some basic hit detection indicated by the character flipping upside down. It's occurred to me that some of you might not have played Doom and can't tell the difference between my version and the real game, so I've made up a little diagram to help you out. First up, uniquely identifiable enemies. That would be both games. Doom may have more enemies, but I replicated both the Cacao Demon and the Imp in my game, and personally, I think they look amazing. Next up, Color. Well, that would be the original Doom game. But what about Doom Music? That would be both games. What about an epic title screen? That would be both games as well. I replicated the Doom title screen to the best of my abilities. Not bad, huh? My favorite part is the Doom guy doing, Hey, who parked their car here? Next up, ability to see around corners. That would be my version. Enemies are either on or off in my game, and the point detection is in the center of the enemy. Walls are then scaled with perspective and distance, and voila, enemies appear in front of a wall. Last but not least, what about the ability to only see enemies 310 out of 360 degrees? Well, that unfortunately would be my version. For whatever reason, you cannot see enemies looking down and to the right. No idea why, I tried to fix it multiple times, couldn't do it, gave up. Anyways, I did try to design the levels to avoid this from happening, however. Remember, you cannot shoot the invisible enemy, but likewise, they will not shoot you, so it works itself out. So Doom ended up being extremely complicated. I encourage you to check out the game for yourself. The link is in the description below. I put a lot of work into it and it has three levels to complete. You might have a hard time on weak computers, but that's the nature of the beast. You must use Chrome, but that's only because it looks horrible in other browsers. Edge is doable, it's just very gray. And then there's Firefox. You can't even make out what's on screen and it lags horribly. Well, that concludes my checkbox system. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for the growth it's seen recently. If you want to make your own game with the checkbox system, good luck, dude. I'll put the code in the description. If you happen to make something, leave it in the comments and I'll feature it on the website. I'll catch you guys next time. Adios.